and in the first place let's take uh, flat files csv files and i have a csv file i didn't take a very big or complex csv file so we can see this is comma separated and we want to read it inside talent and we want to parse it accordingly and so we could have different uh, uh, cases inside uh, for a csv file for example the data could be uh, could be enclosed using double quotes and we could have multiple values inside those value for example in this case so we have some uh, some spaces that we need to trim and we have the data that's separated by commas and we have these five six different columns we could we have multiple data types integer and blah 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 but think it a different way for for basically managing it inside talent so in this case we have only five columns but let's suppose if we if you have like 50 columns so generally when you are working with talent you need to define the schema in a static way for example let's let's have this component this is the component for parsing the limited files and in this case we basically start defining the columns one by one for example column one this is going to be a string and then second third fourth but this is a very hectic and very naive approach it doesn't work while working with big files so we need to we basically want to detect the schema automatically for this case you guys uh, could go to metadata and here we you have file delimited and one one basically uh, real benefit of working with metadata is that you guys can uh, reuse it in multiple integration jobs so you just define it once reuse it multiple times so it's a centralized approach and it's a single point of update single point of failure single point of success or whatever you was uh, you guys want to call it but this is like just we need to make the updates at only one point so let's give it a name let's call it csv underscore file one and then next and now basically we need to select the file which is stored somewhere on the machine and there we go now we have the file and we have the data of the file which we can see without parsed and next so here we need to set the configuration settings for example so we know that the delimiter is a comma it's standard end of line and we are using csv options like we have text enclosure which is double quotes we basically do not have any escape character and then we have the first column as the header we would like to skip empty rows we do not want to limit the data and set heading row as column names and then we can refresh the data and let's see so perfect so now we can see we have these five columns properly parsed and we have the data split it in multiple columns and this is the data that's directly coming from here we did not we have not defined the schema manually it's a completely automatic detection of the schema and in the next uh, level we can even cross confirm if we want to so generally it detects itself if it's a date if it's a string or integer in this case it has properly detected it to be integer and strings and we have the lengths and precedence and if we want to keep it null or not and now we have it and then basically we select finish and now we have the centralized metadata created here then let's open a uh, norm okay and maybe one one more suggestion or recommendation from my side so when you guys work with integration jobs so it's preferable that you guys use a pre-job component and a post-job component so this makes the this makes the flow or the design more clear and we use pre-job component for 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 example opening the connections setting up some parameters 
and then we have the post job for committing the data inside the database or maybe closing connections or maybe sending emails or just finalizing and uh, making the final entries in some control tables so it's more clean and this is more easily maintainable so there we go now let's start working with the integration job and the parsing okay so now here you have two different types one is property type and one is schema so we would like to use the schema from repository which is basically the central location and here we have to select the file file delimited csv file 1 and the metadata would okay good and so the schema is now coming from the centralized location second is the property type property type means the configuration settings would we like to define it ourselves or do we want to just get it from the centralized location so we right now would like to get it from the repository so there are less chances of errors when we go for this approach so now you can see you cannot update it here if you click somewhere you will get an option that it's generally not allowed but we can either update the repository connection or maybe we can change it to built-in property so we just cancel it and yep so the, these are the basic settings for parsing a CSV file you guys can go through uh, I would say these were two important aspects that I thought are worth explaining and let's see what we have in the advanced settings so if I if you would uh, if you guys have noticed so we have one field in which we have some extra spaces that we want to trim and we can trim it right away before even passing the data to the next component trim all columns and that's it for now let's run the integration job and we would like to see the parsed data perfect so we have the data properly parsed and you guys can notice that these three cities are also properly trimmed so we know we don't have any leading or trailing spaces next to them which is sort of great the next thing I would like to discuss so most of you guys will be using these uh, this D file input delimited component but maybe you're not aware about if you guys have some inconsistent records in your schema and you would like to capture them somehow and you want to process them somehow for example currently so this schema is defined in such a way that the first column is integer and the next all columns are strings but let's suppose if we have uh, we have a next entry we, we just enter some dummy details so in this case we have the first column which is violating the principle that it should be an integer and now for this case I okay maybe let me deactivate these ones that I I'll explain them later on so let me update the repository because I previously created these connections and now I would like to update them so that we have the updated data good so we have the data now and we can basically have a look on the schema that we have so we can view schema and we can see that the serial number is an integer and you guys might be knowing about the triggers and the data the data flow uh, triggers so this is a normal trigger and this is a reject trigger for example in this case if I hover on it so I can see reject or iterate so this one is a normal data flow trigger not a trigger basically but this is the normal data flow and this is a reject path and 
let's execute it and we would like to see the rejected records in a separate flow and the consistent records in a separate flow so that we can handle them accordingly so this is this is the first flow wait a second yep so we have this reject path and in this path we can see we have already got the error serial number which was supposed to be an integer is getting the value null because it does not have the right consistent value and then we have the next columns which are parsed correctly and then we have the error message couldn't parse value for column serial number in row 3 value is a a a a and details is number format exception for input string blah 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 so this is how we get the error message and we get the records that are not consistent and then we can process them accordingly sometimes the rules for schema consistency are more strict for example uh, not only the data types but also the lengths of the different values we would like to take into account so in this case you uh, so if you're using this t file input delimited and maybe one thing if you want to uh, capture the rejected records then you need to check this option check each row structure against schema and even if you set this option you're not going to handle the length length problems so for this case there is another component which is this t schema compliance check uh, check so this is a more advanced component for validating the schema structure and if you define some particular lengths for particular fields they'll also be taken into account for example so here I have defined the lengths it should be 8 10 15 and 31 and so whatever comes into T schema compliance check is then moved on as the clean data and this inconsistent data and now we can see that the second column should contain length 8 so maybe in this case let me add some further characters now the length 8 has been exceeded and we should be capturing this this problem using t schema compliance check so if we if we have a look on this integration job so 19 rows have been passed on here and one row has been moved to the reject path and which was this one row this was exactly the row which has additional length we can even see it here in the console let's get it good so here we have it first name exceed max length which is supposed to be 8 and the serial number okay no sorry okay these are the rest details but first name exceed max length so if you guys are more strict on the schema validation and schema consistency checks I would propose you guys to go and explore this T schema compliance check this is pretty handy because data integration is not about simply setting up the data integration pipelines and just getting the data from source to target it's way more than that and it's it's a lot about validation and accuracy so explore this component and have a look if you guys have any queries you can either comment down on the, on this video or maybe you can write write me a personal email you can see my email address in the in the video uh, description section okay so then we have two more components I would say let me speed up good so one component is T file input full row so in this component we are just getting the entire row so here we have the configuration settings defined looks great okay so so normally when we get full row then we need to later on parse it somehow in some of the cases and we should know how we could parse so if, if you read the data using a t file input delimited you need to parse it right away before moving it on 
but if you want to parse some delimited content during the flow or in the middle of the flow then you have a separate component which is d extract delimited fields and here you can specify the field separator and yeah the rest of the details and then we can move the data to the next component so for example in this component we can if you click on this row four line and you see the settings so you can see it's only one column that's being passed on to the next component this is a string and this is the entire row and this is passed here and now when if we click it here we see the settings so we can see these are five columns and these are basically uh, these are ba basically parsed in this component you guys can have a look on the schema and you will get to know so one full row is coming in five columns going out because they are delimited at this point and this is the field that needs to be delimited and lastly we have uh, another component file input full raw full raw we can read the file using a string or a bytes array or a uh, the string or not the string this is a stream and then we can just pass it on to the next component we can uh, we can convert its type we can uh, then write it somewhere we can process it somehow uh, but yeah if we want to read the entire content it's it's going to be read using this uh, this component so uh, I would say that's it about the flat files